So, for those who don't know me, my name is Dwayne. Uh, I've been a friend here at the Seventh Day Sabbath Church for some time, and they've asked me to uh, give a little talk this morning. And uh, my whiteboard is a little small, and I have a lot of material to cover. And uh, you'll forgive me; I'm not going to waste a lot of time this morning with preliminaries. But my hope is today that we'll all ask a question when we're done today. The question is this. What must I do to be saved? Okay? You're getting a handout this morning. And the first one you'll see is the large one. It's called Crossing the Jordan and the Seventh Trumpet Sounded. We're going to go from the history of the crossing of the Jordan until October 22nd, 1844 this morning in one hour. So uh, fasten your seatbelts. Uh, there is a quote in the Great Controversy that I want to begin with. And it's in the chapter called, it's page 343. Let me just give you a little explanation of what you're looking at. This is hard to see, so I made one for everybody so you can follow along the staff this morning. This timeline here on the bottom is the sacred history beginning with the crossing of the River Jordan by the Israelites coming out of uh, the wilderness after the exodus from Egypt. 425 is the time of the judges. 1095 is the anointing of King Saul. 975 is the apostasy of Jeroboam. 910 is the reform movement of Elijah. 742 is the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 7. All this is documented for you on the list below. All the, all the uh, text that go with the, uh, the date. These are all BC days. 742 BC is the uh, prophecy of uh, Isaiah that the uh, conspiracy of the northern tribes against Judah would not stand and that uh, Israel would no longer be a nation within 65 years. 723 B.C. is the uh, taking of the northern tribes by the uh, Shalmanzer, the king of Assyria. 677 is the captivity of Manasseh by the same Assyrian power. 606 B.C. is the uh, uh, captivity of the city of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, which begins the 70 years captivity. 536 uh, B.C. is the uh, first decree of Artaxerxes Longimanus which concludes the 70 years captivity that the children of Israel were in. You'll notice here it says 490 years. From the anointing of King Saul to 606 uh, B.C. when Nebuchadnezzar des uh, destroyed the city of Jerusalem and took Daniel captive and his three Hebrew worthies, it was 490 years uh, between the anointing of King Saul when the children of Israel would desire to have a king over them instead of uh, King Jesus, and that 490 years would conclude in the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. This is a very important uh, chronology. It helps you to see that these stories are not isolated incidents in the Bible. Sometimes growing up in the church, whether in the Catholic Church or the Protestant churches or in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we've been read Bible stories as we were put to bed and mommy and dad told us about uh, David and Goliath. And we formed in our thinking that these were just stories, but actually these stories are connected with uh, sacred history. Amen. And they're connected in such a way that God was interacting with these people the same way he's interacting with us today. Mm -hmm. And what it is going to show us today is that God has always been with his church. Amen. And the Bible is one complete story. And it is not fractured or uh, fragmented into isolated stories, but it's the story of God moving forward really to take a people home with him. And uh, that's what we're going to follow today. So in 536, they were called out of the Babylonian captivity by King Cyrus. In 519, the work of rebuilding uh, was continued by Darius by the second decree. And in Adventism, one of the most important dates we have is 547 B.C. This is the third and final decree 
of Artaxerxes Longinus given in Ezra chapter 7? 457 BC. What did I say? Oh, sorry, 457 BC. Thank you. This is the 49 years that it took him to build uh, the temple. It was completed in the wall in, in the time of Nehemiah in 408 BC. And now we come to 27 AD. This is the anointing of uh, Jesus. This was in fulfillment of uh, Daniel chapter 9. This is his crucifixion, also Daniel 9. And this is the stoning of Stephen, which concludes the 490 years of probation, which began by the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, which is also uh, all part of Daniel chapter 9. Notice that the children of Israel had their probation at the end of this uh, time period from the crossing the Jordan. They had 490 years but where they did not obey God and they were in captivity for 70 years. God, by His grace and by His mercy, by three decrees, uh, brought them out of the captivity uh, in Babylon and began to give them another 490 years of probation in which uh, they were to uh, have an opportunity to, to receive Christ as their living Savior. They, they rejected that as according to the prophecy they would, and uh, their probation ended in 34 AD, and from 34 AD, uh, we begin to see that the gospel is now moving forward, and it's given to the Gentiles. So there's no break in this story. From the time that God was speaking to the children of Israel as they crossed the River Jordan, His voice and His person and His triumph in the earth is moving forward, and as His voice goes to the Gentile churches of the world, it's the same voice that spoke to them as they crossed the Jordan. And you're going to see something about the crossing of the Jordan today that is tied in to when the seventh trumpet sounds. So you'll also see today that the trumpets are part of this story that are on these two charts. This is the 1843 chart that was in the Millerite time period. That's your other handout. Flip your, flip your sheet to see the other handout. This is the sacred history of the Millerites and the Sabbatarian Adventists. This is the Millerite history. And this is Sabbatarian Adventist history. This is the 1850 chart. This is the 1843 chart. Now, we won't go into a lot of detail about the history of these charts today, but we are going to cover the seven trumpets and how the seven trumpets applied in uh, the journey that God was making from the crossing the River Jordan and then finally to when the seventh trumpet sounds on October 22nd, 1844. And so, with that brief introduction about the charts that you're seeing, the, this one up here is the second chart, the Millerite chart. These are the Millerites. These are the Sabbatarian Adventists. These are the SDA. In Great Controversy, page 343, Ellen White makes this statement. We've been doing some Bible uh, studies in uh, the city of Marina Valley for some time now with the group. And I keep, with this particular group, I keep referring to this particular quote. Because it's very important that you understand that what you're seeing here is the way God is dealing with his people. This is what she's going to tell you. What page? Page 400 and, excuse me, Great Controversy, page 343. This is the chapter entitled Light Through Darkness. You'll notice in my Millerite time period up here, I have the word darkness. Before every reformatory movement in sacred scripture, there's always a time of darkness. And it's when it's the darkest that God reveals himself to his people. Notice what she says. The work of God on the earth presents from age to age a striking similarity in every great reformation or religious movement. The principles of God's dealing with man are ever the same. I want, you to, I want to point out something to you. In the time of the judges, we'll see here today that they began to rebel against the authority of heaven. It even was before that, it began during the time of Joshua. But it really 
becomes pretty ugly under the time of the judges. If, if any of us are familiar with our uh, the story of Samson uh, and the things that go on during the judges, at the end of that period we have the phrase, Ichabod, the glory has departed, the death of Eli, the death of his two sons, the victorious uh, battle of the Philistines against the people of God, the ark is taken. In 1095, uh, under the prophetic and divine call of Samuel, who was both high priest and he was also a prophet in Israel, we see that they uh, haven't learned the lesson and they anoint King Saul and they choose Saul over uh, the God of heaven. One other thing you, well, hopefully you will see today, I left an important date out right here. Very important day. You will see that the decision of the people of God to choose a man to reign over them as their king would legitimately result in the rise of the little horn of Daniel 7. The papacy is a legitimate result of the people desiring to have a man to reign over them. And the man of sin is the legitimate result of the apostasy of the children of Israel in the time of Samuel. This is a very sad tale. But God has been with his people through the whole course. He has not failed them, and he will not fail them today. Amen. Amen. So she says, The work of God in the earth presents from age to age a striking similarity in, eight, in every great reformation or religious movement. The principles of God's dealing with men are ever the same. They do not change. What he did for them when they crossed the Jordan, he's doing for us today. Amen. The important movements of the present, that's today, have their parallel in those of the past. All this past is telling us what he's doing for us today. What was the difference here? Great Controversy, page 343. And the experience of the church in former ages has lessons of great value for our own time. This is the premise of our discussion today so that we can see that one of the things that you'll see today, if you have not already recognized it yourself, if you've been a close student of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, you will see that when God crossed the Jordan, how many of you know that without God they wouldn't have crossed the Jordan? Let me see your hands. Amen. Amen. So when God crossed the Jordan, what do you suppose was on the mind of God when he crossed the Jordan and brought the children out of the wilderness and allowed them to possess the land that he promised to Abraham? Where do you suppose God was at? Where was he looking when they crossed the Jordan? New beginnings. He was standing on the sea of glass with the 144,000. That's where God was at when he crossed the Jordan. That's how close these stories are connected. They're one story. They're not a bunch of little stories that lead up helter skelter to the rise of the Millerites and the rise of the Adventists. Oh no. It means that God has raised up a people and has always been with the people and it's God who's going to finish this work in a mighty, in a mighty fashion. Turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 15. Verse 2 and verse 3. It says, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And then, and then that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, standing on the, or stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. Now this is what God saw as they crossed the Jordan. Now, those of us who are living today, we have a little hindsight we can look back on. That's how we know that God was able to see this. But when... John wrote this, it was 1,500 years after the crossing of the Jordan. At the sounding of the seventh trumpet in October 22, 1844, 
the crossing of the Jordan had taken place 3,500